So I appreciate you being on the on the fight report, and we're talking to Neil Magny on the show, UFC welterweight. Of course, you were going by the new nickname Haitian Sensation, which I love, by the way. And of course, you'll be fighting ruthless Robbie Lawler. Check it out, UFC Fight Night, August 29th, Las Vegas. And of course, you recently defeated Anthony Rocco Martin at UFC 250 last June. Congratulations on that performance. Thank you. And of course, you train at Elevation Fight Team. So. Uh, first thing, you know, how are you doing, man? Uh, welcome back on the show. Uh, thanks, man. It's uh, great talking to you again. Um, life's been going pretty good. I mean, uh, I've been fortunate enough to be able to compete and, and earn a living during these crazy times, so I'm pretty blessed and fortunate for that. Um, training's been going super well. I mean, we have a solid group of guys in the gym every day, um, so I'm um, pretty fortunate to have those guys pushing me day in and day out. Um, and my son just turned seven months old, so enjoy the new role as a father. It's going pretty good uh, for me as well. Oh, congratulations on that. Ah, thank you. Of course, uh, talk about the, the news of your new contract, like UFC, basically any challenges of getting a deal for fighting during the pandemic. Some of the challenges that you had to you know, face to get that contract. Um, honestly, it's been, it's just been a blessing for me. I mean, I know it's been unfortunate for a lot of people, but, uh, it's been great for me and my family so far. I mean, um, like you said, I mean, being able to get a new four or five deal with the UFC, that was a huge blessing. I mean, not competing at all last year, um, and moving to a position where I'm on my third fight in 2020 and we're barely just halfway through the year. Um, I, I'm definitely good for that. I'm definitely appreciative of that. And I'm, I'm taking full advantage of it all. Um, so 2020 has been going pretty well for me so far. Um, and I'm hoping to keep that momentum going here, um, coming next week. And you beat Anthony Rockamore, and this was a tough opponent, you know, knowing that he was going to be durable. Uh, talk about what you felt was the positives of the fight uh, for you um, coming off of it. Yeah, I mean, one of the biggest positives taken from that fight, well, one was obviously victory, but two, um, I got to figure out a little bit more for myself going into that fight. I mean, um, it, it, one of the biggest things in this sport, you, you start uh, – you start underestimating people and thinking that you're a lot better than you than you actually are, and you prepare differently going into certain fights. Um, and that fighting as uh, Anthony Martin was, um, it was just the fight that I needed. It was a fight that needed to kind of uh, get me focused and be like a, a real taste of reality. It was like, hey man, like don't get to the point that you think you're you're there already. Don't get to the point that you think you you made it to the top and you can you kind of settle settle down a bit. Um, you, you still got goals to meet. You still got. Um, ranks to, to climb you still got things to get done and uh don't get settled in to start looking over any opponent or, or anything like that so that that rock martin fight as close as it, as it was it was a real eye opener for me that i definitely needed moving forward and of course you're gonna fight robbie lawler next you know this is a beloved ufc legend former champion you know this is a fight that motivates you not only to be in there with someone who's held a belt but had a long career you know spanning a couple of decades and uh what do you feel about him you feel like you could definitely shine against him in this fight? Oh, 100%. I mean, this fight against Robbie Lawler, I feel like um, it, it puts the pressure on me in a good way. Um, a lot of people, sometimes they feel that pressure and they feel like they folded under it. Um, I feel like this is the kind of pressure I need in order to rise to the occasion. Um, like you said, Robbie Lawler is a legend in this sport. He's been around for years. Um, he's a former UFC champion. He's been, he spent some time with Strike Force. Um, he's already fought all over the world for all the major promotions. So um, to go out there and test myself against, Robert, against a guy like Robert Lawler, I feel like is the uh, uh, an opportunity for me to grow as a fighter and as a person. And I'm what, ready to go out there and take full advantage of that. Yeah, talk about what a ring brings for you. Uh, you know, we saw Kobe coming in, get a title shot after he beat Lawler last year. So you're staying grounded, but also be ready uh, if called upon for short notice. Oh, absolutely. I, mean, uh, I want to get Robert Lawler definitely propels my career to the next level. I mean, uh, as far as like getting close to the title contention and, and getting uh, higher ranked opponents and that kind of thing. I mean, um, I, I know what's in front of me with fighting Robert Lawler and I know what I need to do to get the job done. So um, I'm definitely ready to go out there and do it. Um, and I'm ready for all that comes with that. I mean, um, like you look at guys like RDA, he beat Robert Lawler. His next fight was a title shot. Uh, Kobe Covington, some of the story. I mean, um, so there's no doubt in my mind that Robert Lawler gets me closer to that title shot, um, but the pressure's also on me to go out there and perform um, and deliver the kind of fight that I know I can. Definitely a very exciting opponent to uh, compete, compete against as well. When you look back oh. at the story fights. Yeah, one of them. Robert Lawler's a guy I actually got to train with when I was in college. I mean, uh, 
it was a time where I first went to uh, SIUE down in Southern Illinois, um, and Robbie Lawler, Matt Hughes, and Mark Fiore opened up a gym down there that was called Hit Squad. Um, so I got the trip with Robbie Lawler pretty early on in my career, um, and the sparring sessions with him was uh, was one of the things that got me um, really convinced and really motivated to to really pursue a career in MMA. I was like, you know what? Uh, if I can hang with guys like Robbie Lawler, Matt Beach, Brian Foster, those kind of guys, um, I can hang with the best in the world. And that kind of gave me the confidence that I needed at the time uh, to really pursue my MMA career. Uh, so to be here 10 years later, to be fighting Robbie Lawler as an opponent, um, so let you know what I need to do to get to the next level as far as uh, being a champion. Yeah, that's extraordinary in itself, man. Just hearing that backstory of you and Robbie Lawler and obviously how you've really developed as a fighter. Talk about training during these times. I know it isn't easy, you know, being able, durable as you fighters are. Talk about finding unique opportunities to get the best training in when possible. Uh, you know, obviously, you know, you have to, you know, go around restrictions and, and uh, whatnot. So talk about that. Um, so overall, I mean, the biggest thing we did was a uh, small group training. I mean, we just got uh, a couple of guys together who were are close in, in, uh, in size and, and, uh, and that kind of thing. And we kind of grouped those guys together just to kind of, um, stay within regulation and, uh, and do what we can in, uh, in the primary of the law as, as far as how gyms can operate. So, um, it hasn't been, um, too difficult to get the work done. If anything has been, uh, better because now we're um, we're forced to have smaller groups, smaller sessions. Um, it allows the coaches to see a lot more. Where um, sometimes during Matt with with thirty guys, ten UFC fighters, um, every detail is not going to get noticed by every coach. So um, to have these smaller groups where you can get that in individualized attention with the coaches, um, I think it's actually super beneficial and it's been helping the guys a lot. Yeah, definitely can see that. Uh, when you look at the last time, you know, the champion fought, the welterweight champion, uh, Kamar Usman, you know, performed against Mazadal. Although it was the most exciting fight, you know, he has Gilbert Burns next. So how do you see that going down? You know, when you look at the last fight performance and then looking at this performance against Burns, it's going to be a much um, different fight for him. I don't see this fight against Gilbert Burns going much different for uh, for Kamar Usman than the last fight they did with Masvidal. Um, the guy's pretty solid at what he does. Uh, he's a go in there. He's in a control with his wrestling. Um, he's in a land heavy shot center. Obviously presents itself. Um, it's worked for him up until this point, so I don't foresee him changing it at this point. Um, so it's really going to be up to Gilbert Burns to kind of pull him out of his element and force him to fight a different fight. But um, as far as Kamar Usman goes... Um, He's going to use his wrestling to dominate the fight. He's going to use that, uh, his power strikes to dictate um, what Gilbert's able to do in the fight. So um, I don't see it playing out much differently than his last couple of fights did, to be honest with you. And now you're taking precautions, you know, during the pandemic, you means you're going to quarantine with your corner. Talk about what you do during that time to keep it loose. You know, you guys are going to be obviously not have too much room to do the sparring and stuff. But, you know, what do you guys do to keep it loose? Man, uh, so the last two times I've been to Vegas, one with Austin Hubbard, the other time for myself, uh, we just bought our PlayStations out there. I mean, literally, you're in a hotel room, you just you hook up your PlayStation to the hotel room TV, and you just kind of kind of hang out and, and uh, just uh, just beat up with your training partners. I mean, it's real limited as far as what you're able to do because of uh, the quarantine and most of Vegas being shut down. But um, it just there's a lot of downtime, a lot of FaceTime with your family, a lot of time to watch movies and, and just kind of play video games, keep yourself occupied. But um, the dangerous thing that's also uh, an opportunity to let your mind wander too far from the fight and you kind of forget that you're there for, for a mission, there for a purpose. So it's this weird balance. Like, yes, you take advantage of time to enjoy yourself, um, kind of wind down and relax. But uh, in the back of your mind, you're just like, hey, don't forget Saturday night, you're turning the fight on you. You're about to go, in, go to war with this guy um, and put on the show. So it's, it's kind of a weird balance, to be honest with you. Makes sense. Like, uh, what's your favorite game? Do you like the new UFC game or what's your favorite <laughs> one? No, I've been a lot of Call of Duty. I mean, uh, I'm not very good at video games, so uh, being able to pair up with a with a with a with a with a buddy and play Call of Duty and that kind of thing uh, goes a long way for me. I, I take video games way too personal. I mean, uh, I can remember playing Call of Duty a couple years ago uh, on versus mode with a training partner, and this dude just kept talking crap the whole time. Like, oh man, dude, you suck this game. I'm just gonna walk up and knife you. I don't even need to use a gun. You, you just suck so bad at this game. And I'm like, all right, dude, that's enough crap talking. Let's pull it back a bit. And he just kept on pushing my buttons. And then sure enough, the next time we got the training, I just kind of tried to take it out on him then. I was like, all right, cool. You talk so much crap. <laughs> Let's see if you can measure up on the actual mat. Um, right. So I try to avoid all the competition with uh, with training partners and keep it light now. 
For sure. And, and you, you train with uh, wrestling coach Lester Bowling. You know, talk about working with him and what his experience means. You know, uh, he was uh, definitely part of a TJ Dillashaw's camp when TJ was on top. Yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, even before TJ Dillashaw days, I mean, uh, Lisa Bowling's a guy I met when I was on the Ultimate Fighter. So uh, <laughs> the first time I met him, he was actually coaching against me uh, just because of the way that the uh, the picks were made um, on that first fight in the Ultimate Fighter. But um, literally every single fight after that, he's been in my corner um, up until the time that I fought Johnny Hendricks. So um, he's been in my corner for for. My Austin Fighter days, my UFC debut, um, all the way to the point that went on a seven-fight win streak and to the point that I started beating former world champions. So um, it, it's been, it was pretty important for me to um, stay stay consistent and keep that relationship with Lisa Bowling going. And then uh, the best thing about it is um, he's just a, an, an honest dude. Like if I'm if he sees something in me that he doesn't like or or he thinks I can do better in training, he won't hesitate to say it. Whether I'm a week out from a fight, a day out from a fight, an hour out from a fight, he won't hesitate to actually give me the full details about like, hey, man, your guard looks like crap right now. You need to tighten your arms up or whatever it may be. Um, he won't hesitate to, to tell me how it is and uh, and give me his full input in, in order for me to grow from it. So um, I, I appreciate his honesty. I appreciate his friendship. I uh, appreciate his guidance. So um, to be able to get, spend some time with him this past week and uh, go over some, some, some techniques uh, gave me more confidence going into this fight. Definitely. And also your teammate, Andrew Capel. You know, a disappointing loss yesterday at Bell Tour 244. Like, any words of encouragement that you'd like to share with him? Oh man, for him it's just uh just keep just keep going. I mean, you took this fight on short notice. Um, that's no excuse. When you said when you said yes to the fight, you were warm and confident that you were gonna win the fight, but this doesn't change anything. Let's get back in the gym on Monday. Um, thank God you didn't take any any serious damage in that fight. It was uh it was grappling heavy. But uh, but let's get back in the gym, let's keep growing. I mean, um there's no doubt in my mind that Andrew Capel's gonna be fighting for a Bellator title here any time or or pretty soon here. So um I, my worst thing is like, yeah, dude, let's get back to work. I mean, I'm fighting next week, but shortly after, if we need to drill, we need to wrestle, we need to grapple, uh, hit me up and let's do it. But let, let's keep this ball rolling. I mean, um, before this fight, you were in a fight-fight win streak. Um, and you got yourself the Bellator. You had an impressive knockout against uh, a legend like uh, King Mo. So um, don't be discouraged. Just kind of pick up where you left off, acknowledge your mistakes, and let's just keep building. Yeah, definitely. And also, you know, former uh, – well, actually – Current HFC champion and a former HFC champion, just like yourself of HFC. So that's pretty cool as well. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, HFC is doing pretty good. I mean, in, in the UFC, I mean, Austin Hubbard, HFC champion, Dominic Reyes, HFC champion. Uh, I'm it's HFC alum. Uh, who else? You got Capel, HFC champion. So we had all these guys that um, came up through the HFC that are really making a, a name for themselves in, in the MMA world. So um, I'm definitely fortunate for for those roots and those opportunities that uh, HFC was able to provide guys on the regional level, myself included. Definitely, we love uh, HFC. Hopefully, they'll. They'll make a big comeback in the future. Um, what can we expect on August 29th when you fight Robbie Lawler? You know, obviously, we won't be there, but, you know, what, what, what do you think the fans can expect? When oh, I, I mean, most people who fight, uh, who are getting ready to fight Robbie Lawler, they're not smiling. They're, they're kind of like, ah, oh, crap. Uh -huh. I'm about to fight Robbie Lawler. Holy crap. How's that going to play out? Uh, you can see the excitement in my face. I'm ready to go out there and and, and, uh, and beat the best version of Robbie Lawler. I mean, this guy is, uh, is a legend in the sport. He's a world champion. I um, mean, he's a guy that I know I'm going to beat and I will beat. So um, I'm going to go out there and put on the dominant performance for the world to see. And uh, Monday morning, I'll be the guy in ESPN that guys are talking about. Like, man, I want to see Neil Magny fight so-and-so next after a performance like that. So I'm ready to go out and get the job done on Saturday night. Well, I appreciate you again, Neil. Best of luck to you. Uh, come next Saturday night. We appreciate you being on the fight board. Everybody check it out. August 29th, UFC Fight Night, Las Vegas. And on the card, Neil Magny against Ruthless Robbie Lawler. Going to be an exciting fight. We can't wait to see it. And uh, best of luck to you. And keep safe. Awesome, dude. Thank you so much. Appreciate talking to you. Anytime. Take care. All right. Good one.